name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome back to The Political Process. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Uh, here we are with uh, newly elected House Representative Dwayne Bunker, uh, representing the 17th Congressional District in Pennsylvania, uh, a moderate Democrat with a pretty high approval rating up to this point. Now, we won't need to do anything campaign-wise for a while. Sorry, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to be a little bit distracted. My wife was rear-ended this morning, and she's like, there's nothing I can do except kind of tell her what she needs to do. It wasn't anything real bad, but she's you know, texting me pictures and such. So anyway, um, so we got city laws that go into effect this year, and then national laws kind of going into effect. And if you remember from last time, we kind of looked at... Um, the at the fed why is this all highlighted there we go all right so as of right now we still have a democratic president but then if we look at the house we are outnumbered and we're barely outnumbered in the senate so the president is in a lame duck situation here so dorothy you've got no um support as far as the house or senate right now because you're in the minority for, for now so that's interesting and we'll see if that changes over the next couple of years but anyway um we've got a budget resolution and see like we're still doing some campaigning as far as our staff on the side but that's not super critical at this point if we look at jobs there are some like local seats up for election this year here's where i need to go and vote on budget legislation here and this is where, like, we're at the House level now. So if you look down at the very bottom, I can either oppose or support it. Now, if we look at, like, authorized revenue, they are decreasing inbound revenue for, you know, the federal government by 118 billion buckarooskies this year versus last year <clears throat> so like they are lowering taxes significant decrease there on income taxes uh, 792 million corporate taxes are reduced medicare payroll taxes are down by 8 billion social security taxes decreased by 100 billion gas tax revenue down 5 billion and then no change to quote unquote other tax revenue now we're down 118 billion as far as the money we're bringing in and then for expenditures they are decreasing that by 66 billion so basically what we have now is it looks like the government is going to bring in 4.37 billion and we're going to spend 4.12 billion so we're actually running at a surplus based on this budget now like obviously as a human being i can get behind all of these reductions in tax but then we got to re realize that a lot of the reason why we now have a balanced budget is because we're spending less on other social programs or whatever and like who's that going to hit the worst like agricultural is getting a raw deal uh housing and urban development is getting somewhat of a raw deal like for me coming out of pittsburgh i'm kind of cool with this because we've been in a really good spot there anyway uh commerce not much justice not much science is getting a raw deal deep defense so the department of defense is getting the lion's share of that taken oh actually no we're spending 63 more billion dollars um on military and then decreasing energy increase for finance where there's got to be somewhere else okay income security 75 billion in reduction there that's kind of crazy and then for infrastructure they are spending more so this one kind of hurts 
I imagine that this, like, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but they're spending a trillion dollars. It's down 75 billion, which percentage wise is actually not crazy in terms of the reduction, but that's money that uh, is obviously of concern to many Americans. So I think what we will do here is just, you know what? Like the reality is we now have a balanced budget and this is gonna pass. I'm gonna just support it. So boom, I am the only Democrat who came out and was like, yeah, that's actually not that bad of a plan. Now, again, there are some reductions here spending wise, but the reality is like this was going to pass anyway. It's going to go all the way up to the White House. And I don't know if, you know, if old Dorothy is going to veto it or whatever. But I, you know, I didn't get any guidance from the Democratic Party here on whether or not to support that. So basically, it was my call. And as long as the balance, the budget is balanced in most cases i will support it so we'll see how that shakes loose but i wonder if i'll get some backlash from democrats because i voted in favor of that <laughs> oh. like there are no events or anything that i can do um if we go into automate we're still doing campaigning and you know fundraising for the or fundraising for my own campaign as well as for the political party so we'll keep doing that uh, protégés, we don't really care about all that much. Uh, see, here is where I wonder if I should start doing this stuff. Because, basically, <clears throat> these organizations are all going to be, like, interested in my policies. So, like, if I introduce myself to the education union, she's going to say their views and my views are contrary to one another. So, like, they're actually inviting me to one of their events to hear perspectives of some of their members. And I'll say, sure. And now they're going to say, you want to attend an event? And I'll say, sure. And so, I get a little bit of name recognition here. And they're, you know, like, hopefully saying that it was an informative event or whatever. I think where we probably are at odds here is the idea of free uh higher education maybe because i don't th i can't remember any of the policies where i was like against um some of the more liberal ideas here but i would imagine if i did object to anything it was probably the idea of free college for everyone like i don't mind free community college maybe so much but still all right, so that's that. Now, we attended that, and they don't trust us that much. And what we'll do is each week, maybe, we'll try and go to a new organizational event and kind of start working our way through that so that people get a little bit more familiar with us. We got a new challenge. And actually, here, look. So remember, we made some campaign promises. Boom, already done. Reduce total crime and reduce congestion nationwide. All those things are done. Now... Our constituents want us to do some things as far as getting the military budget back up. I feel like we just increased it a bunch. So, like, we should be... But look how many political points. I didn't actually look, but it, I think we just got a significant amount there for those campaign promises being met. But some of these, like... This one is going to be hard for me to influence. Um... Because, like, Democrats will probably vote against me when I say, hey, let's spend a whole bunch more money. I mean, we're talking five, half of a trillion dollars. No, 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 no. They want us to increase it from this point. And that might already be happening, but won't start until next uh, fiscal year. So we'll see if that happens. And then here, preschool eligibility, they want us to basically increase access to preschool uh write the legislation i would get 124 political points and then if it passes i would get another 1200 so let's actually go into legislation because that's something that we might be able to pull off see here it says initial initial preschool eligibility 100 percent of the poverty level so if i go into legislation and go to education 
and then I go to need-based preschool. It's already true, but I wonder where it is for the level. Like, it's at 100. Let's see if we can make it like... Oh, somebody was telling me, yeah, you can use the arrow keys and say, like, 105 on the dot. So if I go down here, this is not a whole lot of money that we're talking about. We're going from 7.18 billion to 7.54 billion. Like, I don't know if um, Republicans will back that, but we'll give her a try. Like, hey, I voted for your budget. Here's the one thing that I'm asking now. So let's go ahead and see. So now here's a budget resolution conference report. And basically this is people saying, oh, wait, 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 wait. What is this? So is this factoring in the change that I just made? I'm confused. Like we're still sitting here at 4.376 and we're, we're positive here. With a surplus, I can support this. So I'm still gonna say yes. I'm still gonna be the only Democrat to do so. But like every single Republican said yes. Every single Democrat said no except for me <laughs> so, I'm already ruffling feathers my bill has been to ass assigned to the House Education and Workforce Committee and then they denied it they don't even give it a hearing so kind of thought that that might happen basically you write a bill and the chairperson of whatever committee is in charge of legislation that that would fall under can review it and say yes or no I'm assuming that this is a Republican, and Elijah was like, mm -mm, ain't going to happen. We're not even going to put it up to a vote. So the, the good news is I get 124 points just for writing that. But now I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this because it's just not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. So let's say dismiss. And then this one will leave open until early next year to see if it passes anyway. Now what I want to do is go in here to where are oh contacts. So look. Our trust is actually up with them. Let's go to the Association of Teachers and Parents, introduce ourselves. Boom, they want us to come to an event and get to know them a little better. We will attend an event. And they kind of talk about their general uh, policies that they support or whatever. So let's hit continue. They like me to where they, see here, trust is 57%. They're actually asking me to come and give a speech. We're not going to do that right now, but here are all the basic policies that they support. Like, they don't want guns there. They want more science funding. They're against assault weapons in high-capacity uh, magazines. They do want background checks. And then most of the other stuff is actually in regards to, like, funding and that sort of stuff. But I'm surprised that a lot of the gun legislation kind of falls in here as well but whatever all right like i said we're not going to do a speech right now we might do that if we're running for office somewhere down the road to see if it helps but i don't think we need to be doing a whole lot of that right now we can just kind of fly under the radar for a moment they want us to reduce income tax um and see here's the beauty of the situation right now i could actually go in and propose legislation to do that with Republicans in charge of the House and Senate, that would probably get through, but I'll bet you the president would veto it or whatevs. So I don't think that's going to do us a whole lot of good. We'll let that sit there for a minute, thinking that may actually, you know what, let's just dismiss it for now. We might get to where there's a Republican in office and then we can actually propose some legislation to get stuff done that's you know it's crossing party lines but we're cool with that we just we just want to win you know what i mean and i i don't know how the dynamic is like if i come in here as a, a democrat and i start writing legislation that every republican is in favor of i wonder if that ruffles the feathers to where i never get support amongst democrats if i run for a, a higher office or if I run for like the chair of a committee or whatever. So we have to kind of see how that goes. But um, 
that's just something that we'll learn as we go. So here we've got debates and party messages about um, public housing. So if I go here, floor debate, Cleveland Reyes is the one sponsoring this legislation. And basically what he is saying is for public housing, he wants to reduce the eligibility to like 12.7% of the poverty level down from 15%, which to me seems kind of ridiculous. Um, public housing program. So Republicans are in support of this because he thinks that spending money on public housing is a waste. And now here, oh yeah, so here he opposes decreasing el eligibility and so they are going to oppose this legislation. And here, party leader says, we oppose. Feel free to make any amendments before you would improve it. So, and then here, caucus leader is saying, we want you to oppose. But you can make amendments if you want to. I'm gonna just say, no, I don't wanna create an amendment. And then when I have to now vote on it, we are going to, oh wait, see here. So this Democrat, Brandon Bradford Kramer, changed the proposed uh, legislation to instead of decreasing it, he's like, no, we want to increase it. I will say, yeah, sure, I support that amendment. And so like we lost there. So basically now, here's what's gonna happen. The amendment is not a part of the original bill. So the original bill is going to come up to a vote uh, with that decrease on there. And you can see here the president is against it. And he is continuing to say oppose this legislation, oppose, oppose. And like there's all these conferences and then the vote. So we'll just kind of burn through these. Like here are all of the libertarian caucus saying that they are going to support it or whatever. Uh, same thing here from the moderate Republicans, conservative Re Republicans obviously support it. And then you've got conservative Dems that are like, no, and even progressive Democrats are like, no. So we go here to vote and we oppose reducing the legislate or the uh the rate that far so we say oppose it did pass with support from two democrats which is a little bit interesting even three republicans were against it but it ended up still being in favor of the republican party here so now that will go up to the next level uh so let's hit advance now see like i'm not sure exactly what happens with that Okay, yeah, see here, she vetoed it. So it passed the House with the vote of 222 to 213, but then President, being Democrat, was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And there's not enough of a majority there to, like, override her veto or whatever. So that's, that's American politics at its finest right there. And now you can see why, you know, years where there's a, like, Republican president, Republican held House and Senate, so many laws get passed. And then, like, usually the next midterm is like Democrats come roaring back and take over a bunch of seats to get the majority back and basically unravel everything that was done uh, in that previous term. Or, like, if it's just the midterm, you now have the House and Senate controlled by the Democrats, but the Republican president's still in office and nothing gets done for a while. And then if a Democrat wins like Biden did in this last election, and now you've got like Democrats kind of running the show for the most part, it's like game on. We're going to pass a whole bunch of stuff unless you have people like Manchin and Cinema that kind of stonewall everything because they're holdouts, which, you know, in, in reality is probably good for the American people that it's not just straight Republican and straight Democrat vote every single time. But anyway, all right, so there's not a whole lot that we need to do at the moment, but we do want to go and keep working our way down these contacts. So the National Labor Union, um, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm happy that we say, share the same values. 
So I do that. They trust me at an 85% level. We're not going to attend. Hey, yeah, let's attend an event. And blah, blah, blah. Thank you for attending. I hope it was informative. Agnes Pedernaster. So they're kind of talking about, like, tax policies, corporate America, etc. And we're doing fine on that front. So they like me. And that's cool. If I go here, do I have any challenges still up there? So they still want me to increase the military budget. We don't need to do that yet. Organization for gun rights. Um, here's where, like, I'll I'll introduce myself because basically, like, I think if I remember correctly, my policies are basically like in favor of gun rights as far as everything that you can vote on except for background checks. So it's like, you know, guys, we're not that far apart here. So if I attend an event government has no business infringing upon a citizen's right to bear arms like that's how republicans are gonna say and they just don't trust me because i'm in favor of uh background checks like this is the only one where we don't agree but yet it's a 29 percent trust level and that right there is a perfect example of how polar the american political spectrum is like when i go and do this game again as a Republican I will be 100% in, in favor of all of those policies and like they will love me and it's just one policy different and trust level will be through the roof again it's just crazy so alright nothing on the calendar or schedule so let's keep working our way down through these groups Con the commerce conglomerate our views are contrary to one another. And this is probably because I'm in favor of, like, corporate taxes or whatever. And we will see that here in a second. So, like, when we go here, they favor lower taxes. They are against raising minimum wages. So these are things that, you know, a lot of Democrats um, support. A lot of conservatives or Republicans are against. And so we're not best friends here. Trust level 37%. But I don't care. This is, you know, all right, that's just what we're going to do. Challenges have appeared. Universal preschool. They still want us to pass this. Uh, that's just not going to happen with the House and Senate being held by Republicans. So we're not even going to bother. We'll leave the, the challenge in there for a bit. Uh, let's go into contacts and let's go talk to some doctors and nurses and such. Yeah, they share our values and interests. So that's cool. 76% uh, trust. So that's pretty good. Next. Four hours earning some stuff. We don't have any more challenges. Let's go ahead and go back in here and do the nurses. Let's go talk to them. We are also on the same page as far as trust and whatnot. So 76%. That's cool. Next. We do have a new challenge. Abolish medicaid expansion so i'm not a hundred percent sure okay so ever since medicaid expansion went into effect my health insurance costs have increased get rid of it and cassandra is the one who asked me to do that this again something that's not likely to happen unless the president and congress are held by the same party so like we're going to basically just leave all of these challenges in here for a minute and see what we can do down the road but like there's just not a whole lot that we can do at the moment so so retirees should like me a lot yeah and i think this just has to do with social security but i'm not sure honestly let's see yeah support they support medicaid expansion and my constituent there is wanting me to get rid of it. So there's that. They support funding for government health programs such as Medicare and Social Security funding. Cool, 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 cool. So we probably don't want to abolish Medicare expansion. So we got to be careful there on some of those things, whether they are like technically like conservative or liberal ideals and what we actually write legislation to support. So um, let's keep introducing ourselves to a bunch of these organizations. Women should love me. 
suburban women, please like me. <laughs> Sorry. That was my best Donald Trump impression. And, well, I would no, that was not my best Donald Trump impression. But I heard that one on the radio the other day. And so that was kind of just fresh. I can't even do Joe Biden impressions, to be honest. He's just not as um, animate, you know what I mean, of, as far as his public speaking and whatnot. He doesn't have as many things where people can mimic him. All right. Racial equality. They should like me. 77%. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. We want to attend an event, don't we? Where were we? Boom. Attend event. Yeah. I don't even know if I went to an event for the uh, women. All right, elect election night. This is a uh, primary, and these are all local elections, so we don't necessarily care all that much. Buster Patterson and Gus Xander. Buster and Gus. Who's going to win? All right. Contacts. Go back down here. Who do we have? Human rights. We apparently share the same values. 82% trust. Cool. There's not a whole lot that I feel like I can do right now because of the situation where we're just outnumbered. All right. An amendment hearing for defense appropriations. This is big because you remember, I have a challenge here that they want us to increase military expenditure. And then if I go in here to start talking about House Resolution 4, in regards to defense appropriations. <clears throat> Boom. Republicans, if you remember correctly, they want to spend more on uh, defense spending. So we are going to... No, we're not going to create an amendment. And now, when we vote on it, this is the amendment. Dude is wanting to reduce it by $5 billion. Um, I'll say yes to that because I still think that's a significant increase. And why are there so few people voting on this? Like it's 31 to 20. I'm confused. But anyway, maybe it's just the committee that's doing this at this point. So the amendment passed. So that will go down in the bill and instead of it being 665 billion it'll be 650 billion that's actually 15 billion different but i think it was up like 60 billion if i recall correctly so that's good and now let's go contacts let's keep digging through this list a little bit we're most of the way down women's rights organizations should like me 100 percent. that's what i'm talking about we don't need to give a speech they already like me a lot next uh anything going on here negative and then last one on this list is the environmental association we share values 88 percent so that's cool so now we've introduced ourselves to all these like individual organizations now you have these packs which political action committee is what it stands for so you have the democrats pack We'll want to introduce ourselves to. We don't care about this one. Senate Democrats pack. We will introduce congressional Democrats. We will go liberal construction pack, I guess. Like all the ones that are liberal or Democrat, we'll introduce ourselves to. Uh, but then you also have ideology packs, which we have to filter our way down through. So we're going to be busy, you know, networking this episode. All right. So here's the committee hearing on commerce justice and science appropriations i honestly don't remember what the deal was there so 87 billion for those programs i think that they were spending less on science significantly i'm not going to ask for any amendment here but i imagine one of my fellow democrats will or maybe they won't i don't know Wait a minute. So this is now... We're going to just support this. I want military spending to be whatever Republicans say because that gets me political points. 
boom every single person supported this oh man would that have been terrible if i would have been like i don't think i'm supposed to support this and then i'm the only one that said no so that's awesome <clears throat> that will now go to the senate i assume that the senate will pass it with flying colors and the president will sign off on it as well so that's that let's now go into contacts here and we're going to go we're going to start with the party introduce ourselves to the democratic pack boom continue 66 percent trust good enough for me that might go down all right so increase military budget challenge completed that's 1100 political points so these other two i just don't think we can get done the way things are right now so let's just dismiss those they'll pop back up anyway but for right now let's get them off the list all right so then we'll go senate democrats boom uh 66 percent trust that might be consistent all the way down homeland security appropriations continue i'm gonna say no i don't want to do an amendment here just let it go because those will come up for a, an official vote later uh all right congressional democrats boom i wish it would show you the yeah 66 percent. that's a surprise <laughs> all right labor health and human services and education i actually probably want to vote for, to amend this one yes they want to spend 2.5 billion i'm gonna be like i want more so the problem is like these are all individually broken down okay here's what they got last year here's what we're they republicans are suggesting suggesting we give them this year i'm gonna bump that up national institutes of health like i want all of these people to like me so i'm gonna just ask for a little bit more money probably across wait health yeah across the board we want to give them more cash flows here everything is going to come down from where it was last year we're going to just try and limit the sting if we can wait wait, wait. last year's budget was 17 oh they're actually approving what they wanted here oh great uh, that's going to take a while. Can I get any closer with the slider? 17,535. All right, just leave it right there. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so they're getting what they asked for. So that's good. They're getting what they asked for. They are getting what they asked for. So are they. So are they. Child support. So all of the numbers are coming down from last year, but most of these are still getting what they asked for. I wasn't paying close enough attention to that. I feel like we might have missed the mark on some of the, like here. I brought this one up and it's still way below what they were asking for. So I think we did okay here. And yeah, let's just, let's just go with this and see if, you know what, cancel that. I was off base there. I don't know if I was right about some of that stuff, and I don't think it would have mattered because we're not going to get, like, even if we get funding, we're still not going to get approval to do, like, the free preschool or whatever that our constituents were asking us to try and do. So we just backed out of that, and we'll live to fight another day. All right, so now we are on liberal, liberal construction pack. Boom. How much do you like me? Uh, where'd you go? 66%. I am blown away that that was the number. Veteran, veterans Affairs Appropriations? What's the challenge here? Reduce Medicare tax? I could probably get that done right now. Um, but then we wouldn't have as much funding for the Medicare program, and that's a problem. We're not going to do anything here as far as an amendment. Let's just let it go. Now let's go through our packs again here. We've got that one, Liberal Agriculture Pack. Pretty sure it's gonna be 
Let's get another one here this week. All right, so we got that one. Now, communications. Good. Uh, transportation and housing and urban development. Just let it go as proposed because we're not going to get a whole lot done on those. All right, liberal defense pack. Say hello next week. Liberal electric utilities pack. That sounds like a lot, a bundle of fun. I bet you their Christmas card party is a blast. <laughs> All right, still nothing going on here, which is which is good. Um, defense, utilities, accountant. Now, the accountants know how to party. Let me tell you. Hmm. And some of that is not even sarcasm. Like if you go to a, a party for an accounting firm after tax season is over they cut loose man all right so liberal liberal banking introduce sure keep moving our way down here see there are so many packs and these are the kind of people that like wait 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 did i already did I do that one twice? Hang on. We did liberal banking. Yeah, we need liberal finance. Boom. All right, whatevs. Here we go. All right, so now we have a committee hearing in regards to a minimum wage situation here. So, yeah, they want to reduce the minimum wage from 12 bucks to eight bucks. There is no way, I don't even need to look at this because we're just not gonna support it. Hang on, I gotta take a break here because my wife's calling. Okie dokie, here we go. Um, so, what were we dealing with here? Oh, they wanna reduce minimum wage. We don't even need to read through these because we are, you know, Democrats are obviously going to oppose this. Message from the party leader, they want me to oppose, oppose. Here's the hearing. Do we wanna create an, amend an amendment? I'm going to say no, because it's not going to matter. Like, I could say it shouldn't be 12, it should be 13. I'm not going to vote that it's lower, but it's not going to matter if I say I want it higher, because it's just not going to pass. So now we have to vote. And, okay, so here's an amendment. Democrat is saying, no, we're not going to do 12, we'll do 10. I don't even know why you would do that, Tyler. So I guess I will support the amendment because that's better than eight but when then that's just the amendment okay then what we're gonna have why is it only doing like 39 votes i assume that it's because like of only certain committees vote on that the president is against it we kind of knew that and then we've got opposed like these are just basically the party leaders saying what they want you to do i don't need to even read these because we know who's in favor and who's against and now that we need to vote we are going to oppose this legislation and it wasn't even close so he couldn't even get even if they had all of the republicans on board with this committee it still would have been a one vote difference but he yeah they just got smoked in that one is basically what it came down to um so continue good to go presidential primary debate uh let's just see who's running ezekiel ironside didn't he run last time whatever i bet you zeke wins he was i think second behind dorothy in the last primary because we thought he was going to win and then he ended up not and it was like whoa what happened to zeke all right, let's go through a few more packs here. We're coming up on about as long of an episode as I want, so I think we can get through one year. Liberal hedge funds pack. Cool, cool, cool. And then moving along. We were getting pretty far down here. But there's still a bunch, dang. Liberal insurance pack, continue. Next. 
How far down was I? We got insurance. We got mortgage bankers. Nothing going on here. Actually, let's look. A new challenge popped up, so we'll look at that in a second. Mortgage bankers, investment firm. Next. Real estate. All right, now, what's the challenge? Reduce Medicare taxes, tighten border security. So we probably just need to increase the budget there. Like this reduced Medicare tax, we're not even gonna try. I might be on board with this one. Um, so we'll leave that one up there. And now back to here and more networking. Boom. And here we're coming up on election night. So we got that one. Liberal lawyers. And now, is it primary night for the presidential election? Yeah, let's watch it. Wait, shouldn't it be? No, oh, whatever. Skip. And now, where are we going? Contacts. We got ventures, lawyers, transportation. Almost done here. Liberal business pack. Uh, Democratic primary debate. So that oh, the presidential primary, I guess, is not this year. Durr. There's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds fun. Let's do it. Contacts. Come on back down here. See, like, you have the limited liberal business pack and the liberal health pack. Like, how are those different than, um, where were they? I thought that we had some of those, but maybe I'm thinking of the organizations. So like we started doing some of these, that's what it was. We've already introduced ourselves to like the national commerce conglomerate. That's different than the liberal business pack. You know what I mean? It might be the same subsets of people in there. We got a new challenge. We'll check that out in a second. And another new challenge, tighten border security. They want a flat income tax. I'm not going to do that. Illegalize recreational use of marijuana. I could get behind that. Brings in some tax revenue. You know what I mean? So we are almost done here liberal labor union pack next uh where were we oh that's it so that's all of the packs and then we've gone here to so we've done organizations already then we got into packs and we did all the party ones now we'll need to work our way through ideology and these are some that we might, like, we probably won't do these guys because being a Democrat, we're probably not in favor of coal power or whatever. So we'll start working on those next year. We're going to wrap up this year and just kind of burn through these last few weeks here because we just kind of want to see what's going to happen starting in the next episode. So in 2032, there will be state house, senate, and then House, Senate, and President elections. So this is a huge year in terms of the federal landscape. Uh, so this is going to be interesting to see what happens there. Now, we're not running for anything here because we are still going to be... Where's my profile? Um, we should still hold office for a couple more years, shouldn't we? Isn't it a six-year term? I can't remember. But bottom line is it's going to be a big year for the party. We'll see if we can regain control and hold the office of the president, which would be big. So um, let's go ahead now and advance to the following week. And that here's where we'll start the next episode. So that's going to do it for this one. If you have not done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, 
comment below, and we will see y'all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon?